Assalamu alaikum shabab! I want you to be loud. I want you to be proud. It's time to be brave. Are you ready? A man's vision, determination, inspired a generation. It gave a new dream for the youth of his homeland. It created a groundbreaking revolution in the sports. When a vision is strongest, nothing can stop its far-reaching impact. And the vision was three powerful letters. KHK. And today, his vision is far-reaching. The valor and pride of his homeland is far-reaching. Today, his vision is defining the future of a new generation. A generation of heroes and of gladiators. Today is the day of hope for the hopeless. The day KHK will inspire the souls to fight back, irrespective of what they are and who they are. Many will emerge as heroes. This will be a new era of true heroes and gladiators. When he stood in the front and led them, they called him the Prince of Gladiators and Heroes.
In 2016, a vision revolutionized mixed martial arts in the Middle East. It all started with the evolution of MMA in a small island in the Middle East. The magnificent kingdom of Bahrain, a land of ancient glory and bravery, thriving under great leaders and visionaries. The country is now home to the largest MMA promotion in the region, Brave Combat Federation. And the kingdom became the first ever country outside of the United States that featured the IMF World Championships. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his true warrior spirit envisioned the growth of MMA in the region. He believed in the glory of the sport of mixed martial arts and facilitated the best MMA facility in the land. Along with brave President the Hawk, Mohammed Shaheed, in the shortest span of time we grew stronger. We grew bigger. This is a story of the fastest growing MMA promotion in the world. This is the story of Brave Combat Federation. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. A former K-1 fighter, actor Sin Andre Rumanum, has worked hard to make his MMA debut a successful one. As he takes on Randy Fabian who has experience in both K-1 and Sambo and is also hoping to make a winning professional debut. Coming up next, actor Sin Andre Rumanum takes on Randy the Stinger Phoebean in a featherweight bout. Finally, a huge thank you to our sponsor, Smexindo, as well as TVRI, ORY, KFG, Kuda Lot do Santana, and Nusa Dua Beach and Hotel Spa. Thank you for all your support in making this magnificent event a reality. Let's move on to our short show as we have our first fight on tap. First up, please welcome, representing Han Academy Malang and fighting out of Indonesia, please welcome Randy the Stinger Fabian. Brave Nation, this first battle is three, five minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist making his professional debut tonight. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.6 kilograms. Representing Han Academy Salong and fighting out of Indonesia. Please welcome Randy the Stinger Fabian. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist also making his professional debut tonight. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 63.2 kilograms. Representing Papua Top Team and Proximo and fighting out of Indonesia. Give it up for actor son, Andre Romano. Your referee is Cynthia Wichia. We are off. I think the leg kick is going to be a big weapon for both men here. Stinger setting up his hands, playing maybe a little bit too quickly with the distance between him. He may get countered. Trying to work that inside leg kick. Fabian pressing hard. Maybe just a little bit too. Oh, big head kick. 
anticipated the kicks are being fired off here. Fabian showing a very impressive ability to distance manage now. He's popping in, popping out, forward and back. It's only a matter of a few centimeters, but it's all he needs to hit or not get hit. There you saw it right there. We're likely going to see it again, and that, we saw the not hit, and that was the hit. Remind him a little bit tentative here, Carrick. I think that head kick put the mounters on him. All right. Really is Fabian. Oh, big shot over the top. Yeah, it's a scary air of anticipation. You think one of these fighters just need that one big shot. They clearly have power. Nice level change from Fabian. Remind him it shifted. He'd gone from an orthodox to a southpaw stance, but he's now returned to his usual stance. He's trying to give his opponent some different looks. See if he can shake him, but so far he has not. Fabian looks very calm in there, Kerry. Like you say, that's all that experience from his K1 and his Muay Thai background. Oh, 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 is it? Wow, what a shot from Randy the Stinger. Fabian makes his professional debut on the Howard grind of the Brave Arena and now one and oh, and has the potential now to go on with his career, get a fight on the global stage. Let's have another look at that action. And we just missed the shot, but the follow-up hammer fists. Referee made the right decision. You can see, remind him still a little bit. And Phil, with that, the Stinger is now going to go global. He has now been afforded the opportunity to fight for Brave Combat Federation internationally. Kerrick, I think you could be looking at a broken jaw there. Unfortunately, something does appear to be not right with actress and Andre Ruminum. We do have an excellent medical staff on hand here. There are multiple ambulances, multiple doctors. I don't think any of that's going to be necessary. But that was a mighty shot from Randy, the Stinger Fabian, and I'm very excited to say, Brave Nation, we are going to be seeing more of him. Carlos Kramer ascends to the cage to give us the official decision. All right, Brave Nation, what a way to start off our historic night here in Bali, Indonesia for Brave CF 66. This bout comes to an end at two minutes of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Randy the Stinger Fabian! This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Olon Silalahi is back in the Brave CF arena and hoping to build on a huge knockout victory in last time out under the Brave lights. He takes on Wilhelm Natalax Munster, a very durable fighter who possesses tremendous KO power himself. Coming up next, Olone Big Baby Silalahi takes on Wilhelm Monster Alaburu Natalex Munster. Here we go, Brave Nation. This next battle is three, five in rounds in the light heavyweight division. 
Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 184 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 91.75 kilograms. Representing Jungle Camp and fighting out of Indonesia. Please welcome Willem Alex Moster. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and one loss. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 92.75 kilograms. Representing Bali MMA and fighting out of Indonesia. Give it up for our new one, Big Baby Sila Lucky. Your referee is Joshua Hamilton. Fireworks game. Brave Nation, this could end very, very soon. That was a huge leg kick. So, oh, think these guys are firing shots off each other. And that one's good. Big takedown from Selalahi. Big Baby with a big takedown. Big Baby now in guard. Looks like he's going to be trying to pass that guard, although he does have the option of sitting in that half guard. For some fighters now, it is a favored place to be. You know, a lot of fighters happy to sit in that anchor position and land big shots, but great job by Moster to get back to his feet. But what comes up? Must come down, trip taken. Beautiful work by Salahi. Moster still strong strikes from the bottom. Looking for a role that I really don't see very often at all. Needs to be wary of giving up his back here. Full side control for Salah. He may try and work for the Kamura. Beginnings of a nasty little elbow came down. There is scope for Salah to throw elbows here. Mustafa now pinned, pinned from north south. Big Baby moving to side control. Oh, legal that knee. knee is not legal. <laughs> Trying to take the back. Choke kick. is in place. Trying to get the rear naked choke. Oh, that's yeah. the yeah. Oh! Yeah. Another first round finish here at Brave at 66. I think Moonstar was actually out oh. there. Too. And my friend, we did not call that. I thought this was going to be ended by a destruction wow. and destroyed by a strikes. That <laughs> was a submission out of nowhere. Outstanding work from Big Baby. Throws out a backflip. There you see the top just before he goes out. Comes back to his senses and... As you say, Kerrick, none of us saw that happen. The shocked expression on the face of Carlos Kramer tells you everything you need to know. Look at that choke in. And Brave Nation, you can do a choke that cuts off the carotid artery in the side, or you can collapse the trachea. The trachea collapse is a nasty, nasty choke indeed. And you are seeing a near masterful application of it. Muster was topping before they even hit the grind. Big Baby getting it done with the first submission win in his professional career. Phil, we're going to get to walk through, I'm hoping, that submission one more time. But in the meantime, we're waiting for the I's to be dotted and the T's to be crossed. There is a little process, Brave Nation. There's an official card. Time has to be written down on it. It has now been handed to the big man in purple, Carlos Kramer, and he is going to make it official. Oh, my Big Nation, another explosive finish in the Brave CF66 Bali Indonesia cage. This comes to an end at one minute, 29 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by rear naked choke from Bali MLA, all one, Big Baby, Sila Lange. Before that even hit the ground. I'm left by obvious team on 
Because Villa Musad is not a bad man, he is a bad man. It's because that forearm was across the trachea. Your throat will get crushed if you don't tap fast. You see the big takedown from Silalahi, and pretty much, apart from one big leg kick thrown by Musad, it was all Silalahi. This was Big Baby's night, and I can't wait to see him again at a future Brave Combat Federation car. Look at the pressure on that throat. Right underneath the chin, put on the squeeze, and it was all over. Didn't even need the hooks in order to get that tap. That shows the power of the squeeze, doesn't it, Kerry? That is a tremendous demonstration of power, Brave Nation. Villa Mustar looking perhaps a little bit shocked the way People look sometimes after a car accident. Wait a minute, what just happened to me? What happened, in two words, is Big Baby. What a finish. Big Baby showing he's not just a striker. He has serious submissions in his locker. Nice to see that extraordinary submission from multiple angles. Great stoppage by the referee, obviously. Two fights, two first round finishes. Karik, they are bringing the heat in Bali, Indonesia. I don't believe, although you may disagree with me, that our third fight is going to be ending in the first round. It's going to be a very interesting fight, Karik. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. After coming up short in her Brave CF debut, Jillian Goh is back more powerful than ever as she searches for her first international win against Shi Yin Tan, who has a three-fight win streak across her amateur and pro careers and will look for a winning start internationally. Coming up next, Jillian Goh takes on Shi Yin Tan in an Adam weight bout. This next bout is three five minute rounds in the atom weight division. As the ladies let the fists fly, introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This woman is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of one win and no losses. She stands 155 centimeters tall and weighs already 47.9 kilograms, representing. Matrix MMA and fighting out of Singapore. Please welcome Shi Yen Tan. And her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This woman is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of no wins and one loss. She stands 153.5 centimeters tall and weighs already 47.55 kilograms. Representing Soma Fight Club and Ritual Jiu-Jitsu and fighting out of Singapore. Put your hands together for Jillian Go! Your referee is Zuli Silawanto. Big thanks to our sponsor, KFG, Brave Nation. We got Gritty Jelly in black loose fit fight shorts with a black top. She and Tan in black tight fight shorts with a gray top. 32 is Jelly and 28 is She Yin Tan. And a very interesting fight in prospect. Beautiful leg kick from Go, but a reply right down the middle from Tan. Oh, nice stiff job from Jillian. And again, working the job beautifully. Oh, caught in down. Like I say, both of these girls are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu blue belts. What a technical stand-up by Jillian. But she's getting caught a little bit. She oh, stunned on the chin. You're going to see a flurry now. Oh, showing great patience to step off. 
She has her heart. She needs to put the pressure on. You wonder, does Jillian go have her full faculties back, or is she still a little bit cloudy? It's going to be a couple more seconds, and jabs like that. Keep at it. Oh, got the strikes like that. You need shot. even more. Jillian Go is eating some big shots here, Carrick. She needs to move that head off the center line. Sheehan stalking very intelligently. Tan very, very calm. Showing calm far beyond that of a 1 and 0 professional. She knows exactly what she needs to do, and that's put her hands on her opponent's face the way she's going to set it up, I believe, is with a couple of more low kicks. Jillian's leaving that chin exposed. When she's throwing the kick, she's dropping the hand tie style. And when she's throwing her shots, the chin's coming up a little bit. You can see Tan is countering. She's got the measure of the distance here, Kirk. Solid reply from Jillian. Oh, there it is, and there it's going to go high. Yep. Changing her levels beautifully. She's couple, couple more of those, Phil, and that's that. Yeah, she's hitting it with some very stiff shots, but Jillian, much to her credit, living up to the moniker Gritty Jilly, staying in the fight. She and Tan has a formula that she believes is going to win her this fight. Oh, another beautiful shot. She and Tan would do well to stand right now. She does not want to be in her opponent's guard. She doesn't need to. She knows where she can win in that standing. A little bit of an exclamation of pain or distress from Jillian Go when she got taken down there. Potentially the referee could have stopped that for a verbal submission. Legs are coming up. We're getting pretty close to the beginnings of an armbar, Phil. That guard is very, very high, as you say. Can't quite see if... Good work from Tan. This is exactly what she should be doing. It's going to continue to land stiff shots on Jillian. She and Tan is going to continue throwing those kicks, mostly as a distraction. What she really wants to do is put leather on her opponent's oh, head. Oh, shin on shin, Carrick. You can see straight away the redding up on the shin of Jillian Go. Beautiful leg kicks. She and Tan showing excellent timing. Brave Nation timing is so crucial and effective striking. If you hit an opponent moving away, like right now, not going to have a big effect. Catch your oh. opponent moving in, and that's the effect you get. Jillian Go is so tough. She could have looked for an out in this fight way earlier, but she is going to be in this until she is stopped. Oh, changing the levels beautifully as Tan. Went to the body, then the head. Jilly wants to tuck that chin a little bit, or it's going to get caught. It's the calm with which Tan is approaching the fight is so impressive. That high kick was potentially very important because it stops her opponent from moving the head from side to side very much. It's very tough to slip, to roll underneath things if there might be a kick coming up at your melon. I would like to see Tan start throwing in threes and fours because she's backing Jillian up and Jillian's backing up in that straight line. She throws maybe the first two don't have to land but it's three and four that are going to do the damage. I think Tan believes that she's got a formula that's going to win it for her. Big shot from Jillian. Jillian coming back into the fight a little bit in the closing stances of the first round, Kirk. Not for nothing do they call this warrior Gritty Jilly. And this is mixed martial arts. It ain't over till it's over. Oh, another fantastic one-two from Tan. Changing levels again, working the body. Everything Tan seems to throw is landing or it's impactful at the very least. Ten second clapper.
simply better. She has better reads on what her opponent is going to do than her opponent has on what she's going to do. As a consequence, she's able to hit her opponent moving in. She's changing her levels brilliantly, working the body, throwing the leg kicks, and that opens up the strikes to the head. And again, you can see her just looking at the center mass. A kick from Jillian, she needs to do more of that. I love that Tan isn't chasing when she knows something's not going to work or, or Jillian's too far away. She doesn't go marauding in. Tan has been coached very, very well. She knows how to set those hands up, and it's not sprinting forward and throwing a lot of shots and hoping some of them stick to her opponent's face. It's set them up with the kicks yep. and <laughs> land either the straight left or the straight right. And Brave Nation, those of you who are boxing fanatics, you probably are very, you, you, you understand the power of the jab, but the jab in MMA, if thrown properly, is basically a left straight. It lands with a great deal more power because of the s small size of these gloves. Jab got through there for Jillian. Oh. Again, good shots from Jillian. Oh, short elbow on the inside. Yin is chewing up that lead leg. There's a little bit of a wobble there from Jill. Is that arm? Oh, sorry, is that leg compromise, Kerry? A little it bit. is. It is. Her gait is not what it was before this. It's gonna, her head movement is not her best attribute. She is able, as you saw right there, to move her head by moving her entire body, but yep. that's not going to happen as readily as it was before those 11 or 12 calf kicks landed. I think that lead leg might be a little compromised. And again, Tan just so cerebral, beautiful one-two down in the middle, comes over the top, then comes back in for more. And Kerry Jillian really needs to change something drastically here if she's there. Take down attempt and eats a big shot again. That takedown was unfortunately executed naked. It was done without any major setup. That's likely to put you in more danger than it gets you out of. Jillian's overreaching a little bit with the shots now. Very simple rule for a double leg in MMA at this level. Don't throw it unless you're punching or your opponent's punching at you. Nice kick across the legs from Jillian Go. Oh, bad oh, uppercut. Beautiful uppercut. That could be the shot for Jillian. Like to see her, if she lands that uppercut again, like to see her follow up with a left hook. The great idea. Uppercut hooks across, perhaps. That leg is in trouble. She switched stances a few times there, and that is MMA language for my knee is called, or my leg is compromised. Big shot, and it's the speed of it, Kerrick. Set up with a straight to the body, too. It's very impressive. Brave Nation, when you want to hit the body in MMA, you lower your level so you punch straight into the body. It is not easy to do. You can't stay in place and punch down into the body and then immediately up to the head. <laughs> Jerry coming back into this fight a little bit in the closing stanzas of the second round. Tan needs to be smart here with her defense. They don't call her Gritty Jilly for nothing. Pretty feeling a little empowered, going on the attack here. Coming up to 30 seconds left in the second round. Strong finish from Jelly and Gold, but not enough to steal the round. That uppercut is a great shot for Jillian. Like you say, if she followed that up with a uh, hook or a straight. Jillian trying to get on on the takedown. Great defense here from Tan. Strong finish for Jillian Kerry, but as I say, not enough to steal the round. And essentially, Jillian Go needs a finish if she's going to be victorious in this fight. That, that's correct. This is a ten, the classic 10-9, yep. 10-9 round. We're looking at 20 to 18. Gritty Jilly needs to finish her opponent, and this is the third and final round if she wants to get the win. I'd love to see that uppercut again from Gritty Jilly if we can.
on again. Just more of the same up here in the corner of Taj. Say, keep there what you're doing. Keep your defense high. Be smart with your shot selection. I actually think she and Khan might be able to end this with the calf kicks at this point. She's the one thing, if I was in her corner, I'd suggest if the fighter was comfortable with it, is faint with the hands a little bit and use the hands to set up that calf kick. Thus far, she's essentially been taking the calf kick when it was presented to her. When her opponent moved forward, put weight on that leg, lead leg, making it very, very difficult to check. She may want to reconsider that and think about that calf kiss kick as being a potential fight finisher i like that tan isn't chasing the finish she's not going looking for it she's not head hunting she's still in smart combinations and as you say the leg kicks have paid dividends for going into this third round what she and tan does not want to do is move the kick up to the thigh move it up to the body if that happens she's most likely going to get taken down these are oh, another big leg kick Jillian got a job off there, though. Oh, again, you saw the little bit of waver in the leg of Jillian go there. Again, she and Tan just has terrific cage intelligence. She's yep. able to read her opponent better than her opponent is able to read her. As a consequence, she can tell oh. what her opponent's gonna do. She can tell when that kick is coming. Catch it, take the take the opponent down. She can tell when her opponent's gonna move in, is able to land those shots with timing. Not the big shot coming in from Tan there. She really is having it all her own way, isn't she, Kirk? If Jillian is going to shoot for the takedown, she needs to set that up or she could find herself on the end of an uppercut or a knee. One problem with setting up that takedown against an opponent of this caliber is those kicks, the punches, excuse me, we've seen to the body, the uppercut. If you level change and try and move straight into them, that's a fight ender. Jillian trying to turn it up a little bit, but she eats a big shot over the top. Feels she's not able to move in with the speed that she needs to. That the, that front foot that you can see, yep. that front calf is, is now damaged. Brave Nation, there are nerves in the calf. Those nerves control the ankle. When you kick the spot long enough, the ankle no longer functions properly. Oh. No, the big shot forces Jillian into the clinch. Gritty Jilly though, lives up to her name. Moves in, looking for a takedown, completely undaunted here. Nice wide base from Tan. I think you can see her break off here, use the wizard to break off and circle out. Level change denied there by Tan. Halfway point of the third and final round, Carrick. Nice elbow over the top, but Tan completely unfazed by it. Jillian trying to land that shot over the top, trying to time it. Again, Jillian Go trying to get in on the takedown. That wizard from Sheehan Tan is a strong one. She's keeping her opponent's shoulders up, and of course, shoulders connected to the hips. Hips can't get low, can't get low on your opponent's hips. Another big shot on the break from Tan. But great, Jelly is sticking in this fight there's if you're time you must be thinking to yourself what do i need to do to get her out of here i want to reiterate what phil just said for brave nation she and there's an old saying in boxing don't hit on the break it's the exact opposite in mixed martial arts when you separate from your opponent throw a shot she and Tan is illustrating that admirably no they're big shot over the top i would love to see the numbers on the amount of strikes landed by Oh, big shot by Jillian. You have to, she finishes every round very, very strong. Big shot over the top again from Tan. What is Gritty Jilly's chin made of? Just start calling it granite Gritty Jilly. She felt that a little bit of a wince. Short time now, Brave Nation. 45 seconds. Oh, 
a big shot over the top. That one was behind the ear, and it's destabilizing. You lose your equilibrium. It leaves you open to another shot, as we saw right there. Both fighters trying to finish strong. Good double jab to screw it from Grady Jelly. But is it a little bit too late? That noise you just heard is 10 seconds, Brave Nation. You cannot deny the heart of Jillian Go, but what a performance from Xi Yin Tan. Phil, it was obviously a fantastic performance, a fantastic winning performance from Xi Yin Tan, but you have to speak as well about Jillian Pretty Jillian Tan.
see some of the action from Jillian go. Again, cannot question her heart at all. Brave, it's more than a gym. Dan Shield Moodley is back in the Brave CF Arena and eager to earn his second promotional victory. When he takes on Janelle Lausa, one of the most accomplished strikers in the Filipino MMA scene, who's in search of his first Brave CF win. Coming up next, Dan Shield Buddha Moodley takes on Janelle, the demolition man Lausa, in a flyweight bout. Here we go, Brave Nation. This next bout is three five minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and seven losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 56.15 kilograms. Representing Rebel 2 Combat Sport and Fitness and fighting out of the Philippines, please welcome Janelle, the Demolition Man, Lassa! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man to be first for the best record, all seven wins and three losses. He stands one, 68 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.15 kilograms. Representing Australian top team and fighting out of South Africa, get out the shield, Buddha Murphy. Your referee is Sergio Wichaya. Big thanks to our sponsor, Kuda Lao Nusantara, Dan Shield Moodley in the red corner, red tape on his wrist, Janelle Lausa, blue corner, blue tape on his wrists. It'll be interesting to see if Dan Shield shoots in on the very dangerous striker that is Janelle Lausa. How good is his takedown defense? Dan Shield, of course, is an incredible wrestler, so dominant. What? Dan Shiel took a little bit of a bladed stance initially, then shifted. Here he goes again, playing with his opponent's mind a little bit. As he's doing that, very, very smart fight. As he's doing that, he's getting a sense of his opponent's reflexes. What attacks his oppo opponent may want to make. It's extremely good opening from Dan Shiel. Fainting a lot, switching from side to side, taking a fully sideways bladed stance, squaring up a little bit more. This is how you're supposed to start a fight in mixed martial arts. I'm really enjoying his movement. Oh, that's a big shot to the body. Tries to parlay a, a, a kick that was caught into a jumping knee. Evolution personified. Dan Shiel Midley. Absolutely yep. accidental. Referee may just keep him going. And that's what we saw right there. Loving the fluidity of Dan Shield Moodley here, Phil. Switching stances as confidently as you would like. Ooh, wasn't far away with a head kick. Caught more on the gloves. Clinch initiated from Dan Shield Moodley. Oh, gets his back, back take. take. Not something I had predicted, Phil. Lausa does have two wins by submission on his ledger, not just a striker. Dan Shield now trying to grind the opponent's arms off his back, cheese grater style, against that fence. Not successful so far. And the hands are apart. Back to striking. That's bound to be good for the confidence of both fighters. Janelle being able to get in and clinch. And Oh, beautiful leg kick. Dan Shield now seen the kick caught twice. He wants to move down to the calf, no question whatsoever. He wasn't far away with a head kick. Now Janelle has double underhooks. Over under position now. Dan Shield defending well. 
Did a good job with the wrist control trying to break that grip. He's in his running man stance sideways, has an underhook, oh. and it was not enough. He is down, reversed, he's stuck inside a guillotine. We can't see how, can't, couldn't see how tight. Dancio Moodley is now out. Lancelot lets it go. He has not won via submission since November of 2014 when he defeated Dean at Bermudez via first round guillotine. It's a problematic move in mixed martial arts, Phil, to go for that guillotine from standing. It does mean you end up on the bottom if it doesn't yeah. work. Typically, your opponent on top of you with bad intentions, raining down punches, or even worse, elbows. Lancelot trying to create an angle for himself. Has the foot on the hip. May try and switch the angle for the armbar here. Closes the guard. Dancio Moodley happy to sit in this position and land enough shots to keep himself honest. No need for the referee to stand him up because he's keeping busy. There we go. One of the reasons, Brave Nation, you throw shots when you're on the ground even though you don't have your hips behind him, is to get your opponent to do something. In this yeah. case, Dan Shield wanted his opponent to release that head. So he hit the ribs, hit the ribs, hit the ribs, probably did it 10 times in a row. Finally, his opponent had to drop that hand, and that will allow Dan Shield to get potentially to further his position or posture back. There you, see, there you see an attempt to further position. He may also posture back to get a little more leverage behind those strikes. Dunshell doing a good job right now of immobilizing the hips. He needs to keep square here. Doesn't want to get himself caught in something of his own doing. Dan Shields applying a lot of forward pressure with those hips. You see the demolition man's head cocked sideways. He's jammed up against that fence. Tries to step over the half guard. Marshall doing a good job of reclaiming guard each time. That's a defensive strategy in mixed martial arts, though, and unlike boxing, defense does not count on the judges' scorecards in this sport. It means you're not getting killed, but, but you're not it, being proactive. It doesn't. It doesn't really mean anything. The judges would uh, completely disregard an opponent's defense under the unified rules of mixed martial arts. So a little bit of striking from bottom. That's what we need to see more of from the demolition man if he wants to catch the judge's attention. Ten seconds to go. Dante Moodley turning it up a little bit. Lausa trying to throw shots from the bottom. Very difficult. I'd like to see him throw elbows from the position. It was just about to when the clapper went. Now, unlike other sports, like football, where of course, in the middle of the World Cup, you know what the score is. Your opinion, what do you think the score is in this fight after round one? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. If I were to be in fitness, if I were to be honest, I would say then that looks like a 10 9 round for Dacio Moodley. I call it the exact same way. He controlled the tempo of the fight once he got the tape side, he controlled. Get completely immobilized, that's it. I'm oh, sorry, completely immobilized, immobilized Janelle Lauser. What we're seeing here is a takedown. It was a pretty, pretty spectacular takedown. How some ever, but can Phil, the modification, the elevation, the evolving of the unified rules of mixed martial arts no longer count a takedown as being very, very significant. You have to take your opponent down and then do something with it. No question in my mind, although I'm not a judge here, it was a 10-9 round for Dan Shield. Buda Moodley. I think we now know the... I think we now know the game plan of both fighters here. Dan Shield Moodley wants to take this to the ground. Lysa, if I was in the corner of him, I would tell him that to keep distance, use the jab, establish the jab, and be on your bicycle. Implement lateral movement. Don't be there when Dan Shield Moodley shoots. The demolition man wants to knock his opponent out. Now, he tried to do it in the first round by setting down, by planting his weight down a little bit and throwing a single big shot, like you saw right there. I think we need a little bit more. Big shot right down the middle from Janelle Lausa. Again, beautiful IQ from Dancio Moodley. Pops right back up. But we're seeing a difference in the power of the striking between these two athletes. There's a reason he's called the Demolition Man. Big 
Sprawl from Janelle Lousa doing the right thing. There was potentially the uppercut almost caught Dan Shield coming in. Absolutely fantastic double leg takedown. The first one was attempted and was shut down. It takes a, a fighter with extreme confidence in himself, extreme confidence in his trainers to when something's been shut down, go right for it again. The timing had to be absolutely perfect on that for Dan Shield Moodley, and it was. Nice head control, just pinning it against the head of Janelle Lousa. Now Moodley's got to get busy. Busy. He's either got to try and further his position, which would mean moving from inside guard to a half guard or even to side control, potentially even to mount, or he's got to launch a striking attack. Regard another regard from Janelle Lousa. But again, like you said, Carrick, he needs to be proactive. He just can't be in a defensive position for the rest of the rounds. Moodley elevated his hips in an attempt to get all the way past that guard. It was unsuccessful. Again, Lausa has the foot on the head. Oh, tried to head the sweep and now Lausa's over. Fantastic technique. Beautiful jiu-jitsu from Janelle Lausa. What can Dan Shield Moodley offer off his back? Oh, huge. May try and hit the bump sweep, but gets right back to the feet. It's a big shot. Another big takedown incoming from Dan Shield Moodley. Excellent technique from Dan Shield Moodley. He was rocked a little bit there, no question in my mind. His neck was just a little bit loose. Got in on his opponent. He's buying himself the five to ten seconds that he needs in order for the head to clear so he can get back into his fight. Knight needs to work in for the underhooks. Does so brilliantly. Needs to get his head underneath the chin of Dan Shield. That's a beautiful work from Burrell. And so the tide turns, Brave Nation. Dan Shield Moodley got rocked a little bit there. He's now on top and in charge. That was beautiful sequential wrestling. Worked for his underhooks, got his head underneath the chin of his opponent and reaped the leg out. Absolutely beautiful wrestling from Moodley. Lausa now trying to rest a little bit, trying to get his bearings back, trying to catch his breath, and he's going to try and spring back up to standing. Oh, there's a little bit of Clara on somebody. Can't quite see who's caught. It might be Dan Shield Moodley. I would be surprised if it was anybody but. He caught a couple of big shots there, including an elbow when he was on bottom. Valiantly moved through that and is now on top, top in a dominant position. Again, just establishing that anchor position. There's scope here to throw him off elbows if he chooses. Working the body to keep himself honest, to negate the potential stand up from the referee. Little wrinkle we're seeing here. Dan Shield Moodley did not put his opponent down there right in front of his corner by accident. This is real cage generalship you see here. When you take your opponent down by your corner, he can no longer hear his corner and your corner can see everything that's going on. You've got basically two guys fighting for you now. You've got yourself and you've got your coach all there fighting together. It is a huge advantage. Incredible cage IQ from Dan Shield Moodley, not only taking his opponent to his own corner, but also taking away the most dangerous tools that Lysa has, that being his hands. Moodley doing a good job of staying busy enough with his strikes, attempting to pass guard at certain points, throwing shots like we see right here. I gotta say, Phil, that cornering, when you when a shot lands and your corner makes a huge noise, it can have an effect on the judges. That big Muay Thai, hey! Woodley trying to get back in on a takedown. He is relentless, but good sprawl from Lausa. Right there again, the, the relentlessness of Dan Shield Moodley. Cardio for days, Kirk. Lausa did an excellent job. He didn't take a lot of damage on bottom. He bided his time, caught his breath a little bit, popped up to standing, but unfortunately, Dan Shield Moodley is on. His wrestling is on tonight. He is not stopping. Things don't go his way. He just does it again. Thus far, it has worked for him. We always knew how dominant, compact a wrestler Dan Shield Moodley is, but this is next level. He has unquestionably leveled up since moving to Australian top team. There you have it. Jerry, I don't think there could be any defeat in this morning on that one. Another 10-9 for that show, really. Having said that, Brave Nation, we are not the judges here tonight. Judges have seen this fight from different perspectives. Judges literally, Brave Nation.
Brave Nation. If you see a completely different score from one judge to the other, it's because they saw a different fight. Yeah. When you see a fight from one angle, very often, the judge who is, all, by all purpose, put on an opposite side of the cage, cannot see the same things you see and vice versa. So Phil and I see this as 20 to 18 in favor of Dan Shield, Buddha Moodley. That would mean the Demolition Man only has one way to win, and that would be a knockout or potentially even a tap out. But we did not see this fight from the angle that the judges here saw it. And of course, we are not official judges. It must be said that Janelle Lawson does not have a finish of any kind in mixed martial arts since June 2015. Janelle Lawson is given, he's been given his marching orders, been told exactly what to do, and that is get out there and be aggressive. However, Phil, he cannot be too aggressive. If he's too aggressive, if he's at uh, on, 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 on the width of a toe, more forward than he should be, he's gonna get taken down. He's gotta play a very, very intelligent game here, potentially even try and bait his opponent into exchanging a little bit, and then unleashing that incredible power that we know so well he possesses. What? Nice Beautiful show of respect. show of respect in here. That is why I love this sport. Give each other a hug, earn one another's respect, and now they're going to try and knock out or tap out their opponent. Buddha Noodley, briefly in southpaw, shifts right back to orthodox. And back. It's such smart fighting here. Tanchal needs to be careful when he threw the kick there. It was a little bit lethargic, and the hands came down. If I got a read on that, I'm sure the corner was a beautiful shot. Well, if I got a read on that, I'm pretty sure the corner of Janelle Lousa got a read on it too. Brave Nation, one of the reasons I'm complimenting the shifting that's going from one side forward to the other so much is it's easy to get caught when you shift. There's a brief little moment there. When you're going one side or the other, you saw it. We're going to see it again. If your opponent can time you and catch you in that, it is lights out. Just constant, perpetual movement side to side from Dancio Moodley. And this is actually what Janelle Lousy should be doing more of. Dancio moving very, very well in order to pull ahead in this round on the judges' scorecards. Got to land something. He's floating like a butterfly. We need to see the sting like a bee now. But you know what, Janelle Lousy has only ever one big shot away from ending someone's night. He has a monster lead left hook. They don't call him the J Demolition Man for nothing. This man could knock out a heavyweight. He's got violent hands. He did knock out Michael Escobia via fifth round. In the fifth round, rather, in the Philippines in August 2022 in a boxing bout. So we know he has the hands. The Dem Demolition Man right now is laser-focused. Great shot by Dan Shield Moodley. Demolition Man wants to land either that left hook or the straight right. There's a couple of times Moodley has circled out to his right. He needs to be careful circling out low there. He could potentially get hit with a head kick. Demolition Man wants to be a little less obvious about what his intentions are. He needs to feint a little more, level change a little more, pop in and out a little bit. We know what he wants to do. He wants to move forward, land the hands. That's his goal. He's got to disguise it a little bit more. Dancio Moodley is definitely getting his 10,000 steps in in the cage tonight. I don't think the man has stopped this round. Brave Nation is very hard to describe how tough it is to fight five minute rounds under these television lights. Dancio Moodley, Moodley looks fresh as a daisy right now. Yep, we are. We are struggling under the lights, and we're not fighting another human being. Nice, almost skiing-type movement from Dan Shield Moodley. Almost like he's trying to run away from a crocodile. Moodley's had great luck every minute of this fight so far, but he can't get cocky. Just because you're winning doesn't mean you win in the end. In a mixed martial arts, the old adage is true. You can't be winning until you're not. Head kick landed on the gloves, but can still do damage. Moodley did land the kick earlier, though. On the judges' scorecard, in that exchange, he came out on top. Another nice shot there from Dancho Moodley. His boxing looks on point. 
I think he's got the uppercut. I think Janelle Lauser has the uppercut loaded. Oh, big hook. Janelle slowing down just a little bit under the relentless heat of these television lights. Just a little bit less explosive than he was the first couple minutes of the fight. That is not to say he cannot knock his opponent out at any moment now, because he can. Less than one minute, Brave Nation. There's that big uppercut attempt. There it is again. Uppercut to hurt combination. He wasn't far away. Dan Shield doing a great job staying in the outside and landing just enough to stay ahead in the judges' scorecards. Thirty seconds to go, and if you're Janelle Lauser, you need to throw the kitchen sink at Dan Shield. Movie here, just pay, throw caution to the wind. He cannot stand on ceremony or reputation here. He needs to make something happen. Nice inside leg kick from Midley. Phil, Dan Shield could, of course, just try and run out the round. But he's not going to. He's going to dance with the Gallic Bungham. He's going to stay aggressive. You're seeing it right here. He's going to got 10 seconds now, Phil. Beautiful performance from Dan Shield Midley. I think it's fair to say, Terry, that is the best version of Dan Shield Midley we have seen. Absolutely dominant performance from the man from South Africa and now from as well Australia, Dan Shield, Buddha, Moodley. Terrific caught kick. Alison Ever, none, and again, you see here the caught kick. The kick landed for the second time. The follow-ups did not. That exchange at first glance looks like the demolition man came out on top, but he did not. Buddha landed the shot and avoided damage from the follow-ups. A big no mistake about it, Janelle Lausa is an incredibly dangerous fighter. This is a huge win on my and that's how Buddha runs his record to eight wins every single one of them. Why dominant decision? What you're seeing right here is one of my many, many favorite things about this sport, Brave Nation. The two coaches are exchanging respect with each other. The two coaches are speaking to their op the, the fighter that their fighter just fought. There is nothing but respect and even love in the Brave Combat Federation cage right now. about to give us the news. All right, Brave Nation, another exciting battle inside the Brave CF 66 cage. Out of the three rounds, we got the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29-28. Your next two judges scores about 30-27 for your unanimous decision victory. Out of the red corner! Now you have it, ladies and gentlemen, 
Dunshell Moodley with a huge win. Bill, we've seen, we've had the honor of calling Dan Shields fights at Brave 19, Brave 28, Brave 31, and now Brave 66. It brings me joy to watch how much this young man is developing every time he steps into the Brave Combat Federation cage. And we may just have a new contender in the flyweight division. That led to that unanimous decision victory for Dan Shields. Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave. It's more than a gym. Mohamed Farhad is eager to get back to winning ways as the Indian MMA scene looks to once again fly the flag of his country in the Brave CF Arena against Ruel Pañales, one of the most exciting rising stars in the Southeast Asia MMA scene, making his international debut as a protege of Rolando Dai. Coming up next, Mohamed Sherihin Farhad faces off against Ruel Bagsik Pañales in a phantom weight bout. Radiation. This next battle is three five rounds in the band weight division. Introducing your first warrior. Hiding at the corner. This man in the trucks office with perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands one of 65 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.05 kilograms. Representing D and Kevin of Fighting and Fitness Center on Friday. Out of the Philippines, please welcome Ruel Baxit Pagales. And his opponent, fighting out of that corner, this man in the Victoria's office with a professional record of 12 wins and 4 losses. He stands on a 78 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.5 kilograms. Representing IJJ Ultimate MMA and BFC Gym and fighting out of India. Please welcome Mohammed Shari Hind. Your referee is Joshua Hamilton. Big thanks to our sponsor, Nusa Dua Beach Hotel and Spa. Brave Nation, we've got Muhammad Farhad in white and red shorts, Ruel Pañales in camo. Oh, I didn't see him there. An incredible fight in prospect. The age and experience definitely goes to Muhammad Farhad. But if anyone has watched Ruel Pañales, he is an absolute savage. Gets in, gets it done. Another factor which I think could have an impact on the fight here is the fact that this is the biggest cage Ruel Pañales has fought in, and that does make a difference. Another thing that may make a difference in this fight, and it's very subtle, but Farhad is checked. The first calf kick that came in, he turned that knee out just a little bit. So many fighters, we don't see start to check until those calf kicks are starting to affect them. Very upright stance from Mohamed Farhad. Wide base from Pañales. And you know coming out of D, incredible fighting and fitness center, Pañales is going to be as tough as they come. That is a hallmark now of the D, incredible fighters. Farhad taking advantage of his height, as well he should. Throwing those kicks from the outside at different angles. He's going to... 
Pañales needs to get a huge takedown. Brave Nation, that was the takedown of the night so far. Good work from Farhad, though, to get the underhook, and he's going to get up here. And turning a defense into attack, but eats a big knee. Fires one back. This is a great Beautiful, fight so beautiful far. use of the knee. Macy and... Macy, another big knee coming. Nice work from Pañales, using the little space he has. Has the underhooks. Needs to get his head underneath the chin of Farhad. Good separation. Mohamed Farhad perhaps a little bit tentative based on the result of his last fight, Kirik. Phil, there's a thing that gets inside people's head where they don't want to lose. And when you fight not to lose, you get away from your heart and soul a That's little a bit. Point. That may be fighting him just a little bit. And just when I said it, they landed a ni another nice shot from the outside. Oh, front kick. Lead leg front kick. Oh, that's a huge leg kick. <laughs> Panya. Bug six says, yeah, sure, yep. do it again. <laughs> He's got Filipino tree trunks for legs. Doesn't mind eating a few kicks down there. Mohamed Parha does have a TKO finish due to leg kicks. Oh, those kicks are nasty. He defeated Kushal Vas via first round TKO at Brave 30 in November of 2019. Maybe try. It's a different type of leg kick that Farhad throws. You saw Pagliales throwing the leg kick. But when Farhad does it, there's just something a little bit nastier. Part of it is that limb length. He's got, it's going to be harder to get it to land because he's got to go farther with it. But by the time it hits, it's got more momentum behind it, more speed. Both fighters do have legitimate one punch KO par. Pagnale is a little bit tentative now regarding the leg kicks. He's keeping the hand very high as if he expects a head kick to come. But did you notice when he threw the kick, the hand came down? Needs to be caught up. Can get away with that in Muay Thai or kickboxing, but not in MMA. There was that check I alluded to earlier. A lead leg hook kick. Don't see that very much in the MMA cage. Front kick attempt. Cause Bogsik to rear straight back. Probably not the ideal defense unless the only alternative is getting kicked square in the face. Farhad throws a side kick this time. Rear leg. Solid low kick from Bogsik. This is unquestionably, unquestionably the toughest fighter that Pinales has been in with. Oh, but that was a beautiful kick to the body and then over the top. Farhad a little bit irked. He's trying to set up something big here, something clear that the judges can see. Maybe trying to set up a straight right. He's trying to get something clean in there to, to get it back. You could see, you could see Farhad fake the leg kick and go high. A little bit of a showman as Pañal is as well. He's a student of D Incredible. Absolutely no surprise in that one. There are only so many of these he can take, character Ness. Indeed, Phil. Indeed. <laughs> Fantastic wrestling. Savage double leg takedown. But again, Didn't was not able. It. It's tough to take people down in mixed martial arts. It's harder still to keep them there. Might have been a little bit of a shot second advantages that more mainstream sports like football have over MMA is you know what the score is during yeah. the fight. Now we don't. It's why I like to speculate a little bit. How did you see it? I think you can make a compelling argument for either round. I'm sorry, for either fighter, but I think Mohamed Farhad edged it for me. I think if you're looking at uh, damage as part of the criteria, he landed the more damaging shots. We saw it identically. I thought he managed the distance just a little bit better. Landed just a few more shots. Now, you see in the corner, you see two quartermen there. I should say a quarter man and a quarter woman. The beautiful wife of Rolando D is also a, an international class combat sports competitor. 
her sport is Kyokushin Karate, knockdown karate. That's a form of karate where in order to get a point, you have to punch or kick the person so hard that they fall over. I wonder how they sell disputes in their hoods. There's a couple that fights together, thrives together, Carrick. As you said, Phil, both fighters have reason to believe that they won this round. They both may come out and try and do what they did in the last round, but with even more intensity. Farhad doing a beautiful job of landing those kicks from the outside. Oh, it's a beautiful kick to the body. This is the exchange that we've seen over and over. Farhad gets the first shot. Bogsik lands something bigger afterwards. But I think the, the accumulation of Farhad shots is probably pulling him ahead. That was a solid kick to the middle. <laughs> to the middle. It was absolutely unintentional. Yeah, of course. Uh, but and it did hit the cup squarely. And if you've never been kicked like that in any way, shape, or form, I am not eloquent enough to describe just how horrible it is, even if you're wearing a cup. I would like to throw out, not just to Brave Nation, but also to the entire sport of mixed martial arts, that in this game, because of accidental low blows like this, wearing a tie cup, a metal cup, is a very good idea. Wearing a plastic cup causes no damage to the foot coming in. If you're wearing a metal cup, not only can it make back mount quite a bit more miserable, Horrible. but when you kick it, your foot hurts. Uh, Suluev stretch with a metal cup, Carrick. Absolutely horrible. Banyales is entitled to a full five minutes. He's not going to take it. These D incredible, incredible fighters tend to jump back in, if anything, a little bit too quick, Phil. I like to see fighters take as much time as they need to get returned to their original pre-low kick, low, low kick, middle kick state. Still suffering a little bit. Needs to get into the neutral corner. You can see Deki Larkin tell them off. That reference, Brave Nation, to the neutral corner means when you take this time out, you can't go get more advice from your own corner. And we're back on. Oh, that's a big kick. Starting to up the frequency with the kicks. You're using the leg length very well as Mohammed Farhad. And I think very intelligently, Phil. Yeah. I think Farhad realizes now he fully can comprehend the speed in his opponent's feet. He, he's felt that takedown. He's felt those body kicks. He's felt the punches. I think he's decided very wisely that he's going to stay on the outside and try and pot shot from there. Nice check of the kick. Just turned the knee out incrementally. This is also the longest Pinales has gone in his professional career. Could cardio, if he's never gone the full three rounds or into the third round, could cardio potentially play a role? His cardio, because of who his coach is, is going to be absolutely excellent. The little bit of an unknown here is, is the level of nerves, nerves he experienced before the fight. So it's not the adrenaline dump we were talking about it's at the, the start of the broadcast. We were talking about. That can rob you of, of all the hard work you put in to develop your cardiovascular endurance. Big deep breath taken by Ruel Pañales. Starting to slow down a little bit. Farhad, I think, is planning on countering. Farhad, very content to stand outside, throw kicks from weird angles like you saw right there. <laughs> There's such a thing in mixed martial arts as weird science, and we're seeing it. This is the science of throwing kicks at weird angles. And that one went low again. That one I heard. Oh, yeah, we heard the slab of that. I'm not. Kirk, potentially, even though it wasn't intentional, is the second groin shot. Could you conceivably see a point being taken? I think we probably are going to see a point taken. It is a big step in this sport. The referee is going to take his time thinking about it. Of course, the first thing we have to do 
oh. is assess the damage. But that is as nasty a low kick to the middle that you're as you're ever going to see in this sport. Slap bang in the middle, as you would say, Kerrick. And uh, there can be no arguing that. Referee has informed the down fighter that he has up to five minutes elapsed time to recover. And Kerrick, should he not be able to continue because of the stage we're in in the fight? We couldn't go to the judges' scorecards, could we? You cannot go to the judges' scorecards because not enough time has elapsed in this bout. The referee is doing everything he can to keep the fighter continuing in this bout. Uh, because I believe, although it was the second low kick, first one had some degree of ambiguity about it. I, I, I just simply don't believe this was intentional. There oh, was no, nothing not that I saw that saw it. Therefore, it would end up as a no contest. It can change the complete complexion of a fight, can't it, Kerrick? It can make a fighter gun shy to throw the leg kick. It can make a fighter tentative. Unfortunately, when you get a kick to the groin that is that severe, the fighter cannot always fully continue. And you don't want to continue as a fighter if you're compromised by an illegal blow. So there's some very serious decision making that's going to have to go on in the mind right now of Ruel Pañales. Doctors coming in to examine the fighter. And this Phil, I'd have to say this does not look good. No, I don't think we're going to see a continuation. Th there it is. Just the more you see it, the more intense it looks. The issue, Brave Nation, was that this is not just a foot. It was a shin. Full and the shin. Sh the yeah. shin is able to transmit power more fully than can the foot because the ankle acts in effect as a sort of a shock absorber when it's the foot that impacts. The shin is attached firmly to the knee, firmly to the hip. You've got the entire body weight behind it. Would not surprise me if that actually broke the cuff in half. I don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to see the continuation of this fight, Kirk. If that is the case, if the doctor determines the fighter neck cannot continue or the fighter himself believes that, that the illegal blow so compromised him, he cannot, in all fairness, continue, then it's going to be up to the referee to decide was it intentional or not. Well, realistically, if Raul Pañales is able to continue, it just makes sense to take a point because this has completely changed the momentum of the fight, Kirk. I believe it has, yeah. One of the uh, that's it. one that of one of the refinements I wanted to say, Phil, in the in the organization of the sport is that now the center referee can confer with our head referee Decky Larkin, mm -hmm. confer with the doctor, he confer with other people in making this final determination. It used to be back in the day he was standing there all on his own, having to make this this big decision of whether to end the bout or not. It's going to be a group effort now, and whatever the decision is made. I'm very confident it's going to be the right one. Are we over the five minute mark now? Not quite. We've got about 30 seconds to go. Maybe a little bit less. We still have one minute. It's okay. He has one minute. We still have one minute. And not only that, what does this do psychologically to Muhammad Farhad? He's getting cool. He's starting to tighten up a little bit. Let's call that one the wages of sin, Phil. It yeah. was not intentional, but it did happen. He was the offending party here. If he's a little bit compromised, too, uh, that's good. Neither fighter is going to be quite the same as they were four and a half minutes ago. Pañales back down on the ground, struggling to raise himself up. This does not, Phil, to me, appear to be no. a man who is ready to continue fighting. <laughs> he's unquestionably compromised. Looks like he's struggling to stand. Okay. 
The referee looks like he could be calling the fight here. It's a very tough decision for the referee to make. It affects the fighters' purses. It's, this is their livelihood. It affects their record permanently. We've got excellent refs here under the direction of Decky the Bandit Larkin. And as I said earlier, I'm very confident that the good and just and correct decision will be rendered. I think we're looking at by our referee. He has called it. Very disappointing for everyone involved when this happened. Brave Nation, it's disappointing for you. It is disappointing for both of these fighters. Exactly. Muhammad Farhad wanted to fight. His gym, his fans, his nation wanted to see him fight and win. Ruel Panyalas, who to me, represents the next generation, the up-and-coming generation of great Philippine fighters. He has his nation, his family, his friends, his gym mates, his fans all behind him. Everyone is disappointed. So realistically, Kirik, are we looking at a disqualification here or are we looking at a new contest? The sole reason that you could rule this a disqualification is it was the second kick low. Yeah. My opinion for what it's worth is that this was entirely accidental. Oh, of course. Um, I think we're probably going to end up with a no contest call here. Mohamed Farhad showing absolutely no ill will towards his opponent. Absolutely none was intended. You can watch in the instant replay. He was throwing the kick to a legal target area as his opponent was moving forward to attack. As deeply unfortunate as this is, it does happen in our sport sometimes. I and mean, it's just one of those anomalies that happens. It is. Ruel Pañales still unable to stand under his own power. Mohamed Sherry Hin Farhad standing center cage. T-shirt back on. Draped or about to be draped in the flag of the great nation of India. Willando D carefully walking his fighter to center stage. Brave Nation, we're about to find out what the judge has decided. All right, Brave Nation. Due to an accidental low blows, this fight is ruled a no contest. No contest, ladies and gentlemen. But a fortunate way to end our preliminary card. But stay tuned. We have an incredible main card for you, culminating in John Honeycomb taking on MJ Allah for a potential shot at the middleweight title. See some of the action from the fight. A huge takedown from Pañales. Did not do himself a disservice at all. is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym.
Zagid Gaidarov impressed with a huge victory in his Brave CF debut and will look to build on a successful debut with another win as he takes on Abel Brights, who has finished 12 out of his 13 wins as a professional and is on the hunt for the biggest victory of his career. Coming up next, Zagid Gaidarov takes on Abel Brights in a middleweight bout. Here we go, Brave Nation. This next battle is three five and rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing your first warrior, Hey, Alamut Porter. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and five losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs a rating 83.7 kilograms. Representing Human Weapon Fairfield and fighting out of Australia. Please welcome Abel Brights! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man from the Torch Service with a professional record of three wins and one loss. He stands 177 meters tall and weighs already 83.7 kilograms. Representing Cage K, Chief Mahane, and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of the Hain. Put your hands together for Zagin Gaidarov! Your referee in charge of action is Zuli Silavanto. Big thanks to our sponsor, Smex Indo. You've got in red and white, Zagit Gaidarov, and in black with a red stripe, Abel Brights. This has all of the fixings of a fantastic fight, Kirik. The submission game of Abel Brights, the fantastic wrestling of Zagit Gaidarov. Brights taking no time to feel this fight out. He's letting everything fly. And take down coming. You can't be too obvious against a wrestler of this caliber. And now let's see just how dangerous that ground game is of Abel Brights. Like we say, a well-decorated black belt. But Gaidarov is just able to put an insurmountable kind of pressure on his opponents. Brave Nation, Abel Brights, who's on bottom right now. He has an overhook. He needs to reach under his opponent's arm. He's flattened. There you go. He needs to get on his hip. He's partway there now. Partway to be, being able to use this half guard effectively. Now he's into a close guard. He's going to control his opponent's head, stop his opponent from posturing back. If his opponent does posture back, he'll probably move to a knee shield, get a shin in between him and his opponent. That was a nice little hammer fist from inside from Abel Brights. He's doing a good job of wrapping Gaidarov up. Oh, he's trying to get, get the heel hook. He's got a little piece of the heel, but it's the wrong part of his forearm right now. I don't think he needs that more underneath his armpit. I do love a better leg lock game, Carrick. A little bit scary to watch. Interesting response from Gaidarov. He's like, yeah, you try and break my leg, I'm gonna kick you with it. <laughs> Again, Abel Bright's on his back, trying to lock something up here. Gaidarov needs to roll his arm in the inside to free it up. He's trying to work the arm bar, may watch out for the up kick. Big shot right down the middle from Gaidarov. And big speed from Gaidarov. Very quick for a man of that size. Mm -hmm. Has competed at super welterweight, but due to the nature of this fight, taking on relatively short notice, he is competing at middleweight. Very much doubt he will stay at middleweight, given that his teammate Murtaza Talha competes there. Oh, you can see a mouse on the head of Abel Bryce. Oh, he could be oh, That could be a finish. And it's it. It. it is over. Saki Gaidarov with another first round finish. KHK's best kick sequel. No one more. KHK MMA. Bahrain does it again. Brave Nation. This was an absolutely incredible performance. This is not what I expected. You had a fighter who was 3-1 versus a fighter who was 13-5. That 13-5 fighter and action.
actually agreed to take a fight with Murtaza Tala, who is a historic level beast. And still, Zagat Gaidarov wins early in round one. Absolutely incredible performance by the man from KHK MMA Team Buffray. Gary, I think we could be looking at a broken nose here by Evil Brace. Or not by Evil Brace, but I feel like he's broken his nose here. Broken nose. Broken, broken, broken soul. And that was just the nasty hammer fence being landed by Sagi Gaidarov. Huge fire generated because he, he didn't wind up too much on them, Kerry. He Phil. generated crazy fire. Tell me who we're seeing in Sagi Gaidarov's corner. That is Korea Combat Federation, super lightweight champion himself, one of not only the best fighters in the world, but one of the best coaches. That is the inimitable Eldar Elgarov. Brave Nation, if you go to the official profile, for Habib Nurmagomedov, Nurmagomedov. There you go. They ask who his hero is. Phil, who did he tell the world his hero was? He told the world that his hero is the man himself, Eldar Elderov. High praise and deep but warranted. Some of you, deep aficionados of our sport, may have seen the T-shirt that Habib wore, saying, if jujitsu, if uh, jujitsu. No, if Samba was easy, it would be called Jiu-Jitsu. That slogan was actually coined by the great Eldar Eldorah. He's also a great warm and funny family man. He's just a towering figure in the sport of mixed martial arts. Team Bahrain is incredibly blessed to have him. Abel Bright still being attended to by a ringside doctor. Yeah, that's definitely a broken nose, Garrick. Hey, Tim, I think he took a hammer fist right in the slaughter box. That hammer fist, Brave Nation, may look like it doesn't hit that hard, but if you hit not with a whip of the arm, but by pulling your entire core down and impacting with a wrist, it is an absolutely devastating strike. Another exciting and explosive finish. This one comes at two minutes and 37 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO Judas Strikes from KHK Team Bavin, Zagid Gaidero! is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Heavyweight rising star Junior Tapa is eager to represent Australia in the Brave CF arena and will hope to put his kickboxing pedigree to good use. 
when he faces Nikola Djurjevic, a submission specialist who's currently riding a two-fight win streak as a professional. Coming up next, Junior the Juggernaut Tampa takes on Nikola Shef Djurjevic in a heavyweight bout. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and three losses. He stands 188 centimeters tall and weighs already 101.6 kilograms. Representing Yoshikin Academy Toulon and fighting out of France. Please welcome Nicolau Iogevi. Introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 191 centimeters tall and weighs already 103.7 kilograms. Representing NTG Fight and Fitness, fighting out of Australia, please welcome Junior the Juggernaut, Tampa! Big thanks to our sponsor, Smex Indo, Junior the Juggernaut Taffa in black, Nicola Chef Djordjevic in black and red. Two words, Brave Nation. Don't blink. What? Well, that was unexpected. Heavyweight bout, Kirik. I'm sure you ably filled Brave at Nation in on the attributes of both these fighters. Big take down by Djokovic. He's on it. He's on it. He's still on it. Looking for that single. Switched off to a double. Back to the single. He's getting closer, Phil. He's on it still. Back, back down into the double. And it's a great idea. Tafa is an incredible striker. He's and incredible. he did it! This is exactly what he wants to do. Junior Tafa has competed in the likes of Glory. He has a number of kickboxing, Muay Thai, and boxing bites. This is a great game plan for Nikola Djordjevic. Brave Nation, Junior is down. He no longer has the ability to use his hips, to use his lower body, those massive legs, to knock his opponent out. He's struggling now to get back up to standing. He's got incredible power. He may be able to power up to standing. These are huge shots from Djordjevic. Currently riding high on the confidence of a two-fight win streak. Two of his wins coming by submission. Two coming by way of decision. And he's trying to work the rear naked choke, Kerrick. Looking for a arm and guillotine now. There's some pressure on the side of the neck. Not a paralyzing amount. Tafa needs to straighten up right now. He needs to arch that back. And this is what he wants. He wants separation. Big shot up the middle. Boom! Oh, That's it. I think this is it, Phil. These are big shots. We're, they're right on top of this brave nation. Yeah, please take a long, hard look at it. Expect Tafa to throw heavy, heavy bombs here. ground game of Nikola Shev Djordjevic to destroy his opponent with strikes. Ordinarily Brave Nation in a grappler versus striker bout. The odds favor the grappler that's been true for over a hundred years. Nine times out of 10, the wrestler will beat the boxer, but not tonight, not to this protege of Mark the Super Samoan Hunt, who, as I said, is the greatest striker in MMA heavyweight history and the all-time undisputed king of the knockout, walk-off knockout. And what you saw right there, 
is that he can't just fight, he can teach. In Junior the Juggernaut Tafa, we have got a mini Mark Hunt. When that leather lands on the face, it takes a long, long time to get up. Chef Georgievich is now up on his feet, walking under his own power. The two fighters are embracing center stage in brotherhood. Bill Campbell, the Irish Thunder, understudy for the Roaring Lion. Carlos Kramer is standing with the official readout of the time and method of win. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee has called a halt to the action at two minutes and two seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner via TKO, Junior, the Juggernaut! Brave Nation were about to be treated to a replay of why they call Junior Tafa the juggernaut. We're seeing the initial action, the takedown. Junior almost overcame that with that wizard. But in Nicholas Chef Georgievich, he was facing a black belt in jiu-jitsu, a man with tremendous submission powers, was able to get on top, hold that position for quite some time, but eventually it was reversed. And once again in Bali, the punches rain down like a monsoon, and yes, it is monsoon season here. In Bali, arguably the most beautiful region of the world, and now we're being treated to some of the greatest action in the world. A huge hammer fist raining down, and there it was. The uppercut crumpled the knees, literally took the knees away from the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, followed up with an unceasing number of hammer fists until the referee pulled them apart, and there you have it, Junia. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Vahar Macho Camacho will have home advantage as he looks to light up the Indonesian crowd and get a huge win in his Brave CF debut when he takes on Nicosian Dembele, one of the finest young stars in the entire continent of Africa and the number five bantamweight in the world. Coming up next, Bahar Macho Camacho takes on Nkosi, the future and Dembele in a bantamweight bout. Five-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and just one loss. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.6 kilograms. Representing Atella's MMA and Fitness Academy and fighting out of South Africa. Put your hands together for Enkose! Man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and just one loss. He stands 171 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.45 kilos. Representing BSA martial arts and Tiger Shark and fighting out of Indonesia. Give it up for Macho Camacho. Big thanks to our sponsor for this main event card, Smex Indo. Brave Nation, we've got Fajar, Macho Camacho, and White and Red, and Cozy, the future, and Debele in the black and orange Tectisa shorts.
Little glove touch, there will be no more love in those gloves until it's over. Fajar, staying on the outside, just very slightly moving in to see if he can get a read on his opponent. Fainting just ever so. And Cozy and Debele stalking very, very carefully. Bladed stance from which he can pop forward and back very, very quickly. You see the South African flag he so proudly wears on his shorts. And first strike goes south. Huge strike on the second one. Touch with a foot. Boom with a spin kick. Fajar is closed. Back to looking for the legs. Look at those hips of the future. Shut down the attempt so far. Fajar is still on, looking for the takedown. Oh, bad take. Are you sure he can wrestle? We said in the opening package that this is what he's been doing, working diligently on his wrestling. And Kose and the belly making no mistakes, crossing his T's, dotting his I's. Look at those hips, Brave Nation. They are pushed in so close to the opponent, it's very hard even to get a heel in. Watch, watch Fajar try and get a foot in that hip so he can pop his opponent back, then try and take him down and end up in a reverse position. Because of the forward pressure of the future, that is not possible yet. We've got one, one foot in the hip, and it is popped out again. Solid work so far from Nkose and Debele. He's trying to get those elbows in. Razor sharp. He's getting through. He needs to be wary of the triangle. I think the cage might be impeding the pass a little bit. No, full side control. Excellent work on bottom from Fajar. Macho Camacho has managed to get a guard of sorts. He's being impeded by the cage here, so. And Kuzi's doing a great job of just holding him down, smothering his work. And Kuzi was, of course, meant to fight Matis Zaharovs a month ago. Matis had to medically withdraw from the bout, but has made a full recovery. That is a fight I would love to see again. Nice little shot from on top by Kuzi and Debele. Again, looking to pass aggressively. He's not content to simply sit inside guard, land the occasional shot. He's trying to further his position. He'll next try and trap that near arm and then rain down the big shots. And again, excellent regard attempts from Fajar. Big shots again being landed. Cozy back inside a full guard. Fajar struggling to get the feet even, the heels even into the hips. He's, you can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to open the guard and work for some kind of submission, but it's considerably more difficult because the positional dominance and understanding of it from Nkose is fantastic. That, that, that elbow landed. Kozi and Debele may smell blood in the water now. And this is all he needs to do. He doesn't need to take any unnecessary risk, Eric. This is a fighter, though, who, as you said earlier, he showed us at least a new wrinkle, if not a whole bunch of them every time he's fought. And it's relentless pace, as we say, that evolution of the young fighter. Every time you see him, there's something different. There's something he's added to his game. There's something he's developed. And that shows you just how seriously and cozy and belly has taken the fight game. His aim, even as, even as, even six months ago, would have been simply to strike. But what he's doing now is combining a very aggressive guard passing attempt with the striking. He's doing so very, very adroitly. Macho Camacho is very much still in this fight, but has not been able to mount any offense whatsoever. Very dominant work from Nkose and the belly. Shots are coming down harder. And harder. He's taking a long, hard look at this. And harder. I'm sure Nkuzi thought he was close to finishing the fight there. What does that do to a fighter, Kirik, when you feel like you're close to finishing the fight and it doesn't happen? It's a huge thing that good coaches train their fighters against. 
What happens, Brave Nation, is when you get when you think you're almost there, whether it's from a choke, whether it's from a leg lock, whether it's from a flurry of punches, and it turns out it's not, for most fighters, that's a huge letdown. What you have to do as a great coach is teach your fighter to never get too excited that you're almost gonna win. We've got some great coaches behind him. Cozy and Debele has been trained. Do not think you are just about to win because if it doesn't go your way, it can have a devastating consequence, both for your conditioning and for your state of mind. Cozy, the future in Debele is now up 10 to nine and on fire. That is definitely fair, Carrick. Some beautiful work from inside the guard by Cozy and Debele. Happy to get the work done. Didn't need to take any unnecessary risks. That takedown was so close, showed such terrific work from both athletes. It nearly went back and forth and then back and forth and in the end, from Cozy reigned supreme and from there, he got on top, stayed on top, and that was the story of this round. 10-9 for NN, from Cozy, the future, and the ballet. You can see Jason Van Stokevig asking for push off frame off elbows, I think, there. And why not, when you have that type of frame and you're a bantamweight, why not utilize those pinpoint knees, those pinpoint elbows? Phil, we are not looking at a bantamweight right here. We are looking at someone who is at lightweight. Thanks to the massive amount of work he puts in, he was able to drop 20 pounds and put it back on again. Little glove touch. The future is now stalking. And even just the calm with which he approaches the fight game. This is truly a man in the office. He's another day at work. Very much in that flow state. Pajar almost has a look of slight deer in the headlights. He doesn't want to be first, Carrick. Cozy fainting a little bit, trying to get reads on his opponent. Oh! Beautiful spin and heel kick. Absolutely phenomenal kick, howsomever. And again! got taken down, reversed it, ended up on top, and we know what's coming. What a fantastic sequence of events. What season is it in Bali? It is <laughs> monsoon season. And the strikes are going to rain down like a monsoon. The first strikes we're seeing, first shoulder strikes of this card. It's a nasty little technique. The opponent has your hands controlled, no problem. You take a very specific part of your shoulder, the bony protrusion on the front, you drive it into your opponent's face. Not gonna knock anybody out, but it is gonna make them let you go. When you let them go, worse things start to happen. Incredible top pressure from Nkunze and the belly right now. Partizan Kari trying to get behind the jaw. Nkunze could, I thought potentially he was gonna move into mount there, but he's solidifying the side control position. Beautiful elbow. Fajar wants to get on his side. It's going to be very, very tough for him to get up when he's flat on his back. Think about a, a turtle flipped over. And here comes the elbow. And this is really all Nkuzi needs to do. He's just lather, rinse, repeat. He is landing big strikes. I don't think Fajar has landed anything on him yet. Jar four and one as a pro and Kose and the belly five and one. And Kose Kose right. starting to get a little bit mad. Oh, starting to let those hands go. Big shots. Could be the end. Boom, 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 We're getting a look at the replay of the ending. Cozy and Debelli decided he had had enough. He'd had enough of this position. It was time to start throwing punches. Threw about 20, 25 of them, and that was it. Call the number of punches he threw. A baker's dozen, two dozen. 
here they are. Bam, bam, bam. Were they landing on an exposed surface? No, but this is mixed martial arts. Simply covering your face is not an intelligent defense. Fight was rightly stopped, and now we see the two exchanging words with each other. Jason von Skulk fight, manager, and for this fight, corner of Nkozi, sharing kind words with Fajar Macho Camacho. You can see Macho Camacho's face lumped up a little bit. He fought extremely hard in the face of a more experienced opponent. But tonight, it wasn't enough. Ladies, tonight. Uh, gentlemen, your referee, Joshua Hamilton, has called a halt to the action at two minutes and 37 seconds of the second round, declaring the winner by TKO. This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. Asu Almabayev will look to stake his claim for a Brave CF world title shot as he looks for his fourth straight win under the Brave CF banner. When he takes on Kenneth Manningot, another protege of Rolando Dai and an undefeated rising star out of the Philippines. Coming up next, Asu Zalfikar Almabayev faces off against Kenneth Smooth Manningot in a flyweight bout. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the flyweight co-main event of the evening. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and zero losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 56.8 kilograms, representing the incredible fighting and fitness center and fighting out of the Philippines. Please welcome Kenneth Smooth Madinga! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 57.1 kilograms, representing Dar Team and fighting out of Kazakhstan. Give it up for Asu Zulfakar your referee in charge is Zuli Selawantu. 
Big thanks to our co-main event sponsor, Smex Indo. We've got Asu, Zulfi Karamabayev in red, Kenneth Smooth, Moningat in black. Maybe a takedown coming Smooth's way shortly. Oh, this double job and carry on is tiring. Anyway, back to the fight, co-main event, Almabayev taking on Maninga. Six and oh, perfect as a professional taking on Almabayev, who's currently riding a 12 fight win streak. He is at the number one ranked flyweight in Central Asia, the Middle East and Kazakhstan. Many believe with an emphatic win, he could place himself front and center for a crack at the flyweight title. Asulubayev is a very quick study in mixed martial arts. It's not going to take him long. As you saw right there, it's not going to take him long to get the distance reads. He needs to get a shot and then a takedown. It is crazy to think Maninga has been a pro since August 2021. Almabayev has been a pro since June 2013, Kirik. That's why this is a rocky story. That's why we are so proud of Kenneth Smooth Maninga taking this fight on short notice. He's doing a good job. Throwing some shots from bottom. Takedowns in and of themselves don't mean too much in this sport anymore. Those little shots don't cause a lot of damage, but they are a lot better than nothing. Smooth is doing a very good job of not hitting the back of the head. He has the butterflies. He may try and elevate and sweep. Or try and get himself up off the cage. But right now, Asu Almobayev is putting on a clinic, as he so often does. In his last fight, he defeated Zach Makovsky by a unanimous decision. That is huge, Kirik. He is possessed of absolutely devastating skills, however. I am seeing some good work on bottom from Kenneth Smooth. He's keeping himself completely safe thus far. He's landing a large number of strikes. He just landed a nice elbow, just landed a second one. Some of his shots have been close to the back of the head, but not have hit the back of the head. Brave Nation, imagine somebody with a mohawk or take a cell phone, put it on the top of your head, run it down the back. That area cannot be hit. Howsoever, if you start a punch and the opponent turns his head, it happens to hit the back of the head by happenstance. That is allowed. Every shot I've seen so far has been legal. Amabayev now starting to throw some bigger shots from top. Certainly from standing, Zulfikar got a very clear standing of his opponent's footwork, of his opponent's reaction time. Was able to land a big kick, was able to take his opponent down. He seems to be having a little bit, seems to be having a little bit less of a, of a understanding on the ground. He is eating absolutely huge shots. And it is a huge transition from the regional Filipino scene to the global stage of mixed martial arts. And Kenneth Smooth Maninga is finding that out the hard way. Potential might here, Kirik. May try and score some elbows from this position. He needs to try and turn in towards Almabayev. There's different approaches, Brave Nation, you can have as far as ground and pound goes. One is to go with volume, and the other one is to go with big shots. Just like that, Kerrick. And what we just saw was the first combination of big shots and volume. Zulfikar, prior to this, was content to go for the rare big shot. Now he's starting to punch in bunches on the ground. Manigat not showing any ability to come off the floor, although he has done an excellent job of striking from bottom. Guard pass the, attempt. Zulfikar almost passed that guard, but has not managed to do so to any significant extent. We're going to bottom half guard, but half guard is half mountain mixed martial arts. We've got a three quarter guard, and we are very close to mount. We got. 
almost had Mount. Very nice guard work by the man from the Philippines. Continues to strike from bottom. And you have to give him credit for the type of heart he's shown, but he has eaten big shots. And he looks tired, Kirk. He was a little bit labored getting up to his feet. Getting a little second look at that action. First kick thrown of the fight, lands, drives the opponent backwards. Boom, there it is a second time. I think Kenneth Meninga is realizing that there are indeed levels to global mixed martial arts right now. He is using his jiu-jitsu very effectively though. Jiu-jitsu is primarily a defensive art. It's the art you need when you are not on top, when you are not the top dog. So far, he's used his guard very ably, hasn't seen it pass to a significant extent, but and actually outlanded his opponent in terms of sheer number of strikes. But he cannot allow himself to be put on his back again for that length of time. He needs to circle, he needs to use his jab. Last thing you want is Asu Alma Baev on top of you for another five minutes. Money gut looking very focused, staring his opponent down. Looking to his corner for last minute reminders of what they went over during that minute in between the rounds. There is a lot of excess moisture on Alma Baev. Oh, big swing and a miss. Alma Baev is coming into this fight with bad intentions. Has the double underhooks. Trip take on. Smooth going to start employing that guard that he's used fairly effectively throughout the first round. And this Al Alma Baev, I do believe, Phil, needs to be a little bit more aggressive. He's going to either want to get totally past that guard or posture back a little bit, throw some big shots down. And you can see huge shots being landed by Alma Baev. And this is just what he does. He forces you to play his game. It's your responsibility to get up. Some people may say it's not a particularly exciting style, but it's the responsibility of the man on the bottom to get up. Absolutely. This is mixed martial arts. This is not tough man where they stand you up after whatever, 10 seconds on the ground. You want to get up, you got to force your way up. And when you try and force a stand up against the fighter with a skill level of Asu Zulfi Karamabayev, it is a tall order. Big shots again from Alma Baev. I think he's starting to switch it up a little bit, Kerrick. Very smart to go after the body and not just the head. That'll lower the arms a little bit, make it that much harder to land to the head. Money guard employing his guard defensively with the foot and the hip, not seeing any offense from him at all now. The volume of shots coming in is simply too many. Amabayev just ripping those punches down. It'll be interesting to see what Kenneth Meninga tries to do from this position. I think a little bit of fatigue might be setting in. This is unquestionably the highest level opponent he has ever faced. And with that brings the highest level offense he's ever faced. And the need, of course, to scramble like he never has before to keep himself as safe as possible. Potential little cut on the head already. Uh, the difference in speed, the difference in power when you're on the top and your name is Asuel Mabayev as opposed to being on the bottom is very startling to watch. And he's doing just enough, it's, it's constant motion. It's enough to keep himself honest in the eyes of the referee so he doesn't get stood up. I don't think there's any fear of a stand-up here right now. Not at all. Keeping his opponent almost entirely on the defensive, attacking the body, attacking the head, returning to a safe spot. Maniga has got a foot on the hip, trying to make some distance potentially to push his opponent back to stand up. But those brilliant hips of Zulfi Kar popped right by that foot. May take the back. There's kill. one hook in, Brave Nation. 
Trying to work the other hook. There it is. Second hook's in, Brave Nation. Pound the pound Choke the is in, Brave Nation. Bicep, and and that's it. Wow. It is over. Submission win for Zulfi Kar. Brave Combat Federation has scoured the world looking for regions talent that weren't recognized, looking for nations with talent that's not recognized. Central Asia, hotbed of talent. Kazakhstan, amazing talent there, as we're seeing right here. And I have to add, Kenneth Smoot-Munningat took that fight on short notice, fought very well defensively, gave it everything he had. It wasn't enough as we're watching unfold right here. That forearm is underneath the chin. Both hooks are in. There is only our only two options here. Nap and tap. Kenneth Smooth took the smart one. He tapped to that choke. He's going to be back in the gym on Monday with his coach, the great Rolando D. We're going to see Kenneth Smooth again in the Brave Combat Federation cage. I guarantee it. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee is doing so hard to pull to halt the action at 3 minutes and 30 seconds of the second round. Declaring the winner by rear naked choke, Asu This bout is brought to you by Brave Gym. Training for mind, body, and spirit. Brave, it's more than a gym. A former world title challenger, Chad Hanicum, is focused on bringing gold to South Africa, and he can get one step closer to achieving his dream when he takes on NJ La, South Korea's finest middleweight, who's eager to earn a world title shot himself with another win against the South African star. Coming up next, Chad Superman Hanicum takes on Mud Tank NJ La in the main event of the evening. And now, Brave Nation, it is time for our main event of the evening, presented by Sexton Doe. Your judges scoring the bite are Joe Petrozelli, Ludwig Amtoro, Bimo Wibau. Your referee in charge of the action is Deki, the Bounded Larkin. Two warriors are ready to collide inside the Brave CF66 Arena. Brave Nation, do not blink. This will be absolute fire. Our main event of the evening is right now. Let's introduce our two main event warriors. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins, a one loss, and one draw. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs already 84 kilograms, representing DW crew and fighting out of Seoul, South Korea, please welcome N.J. Muntai Love! And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this 
man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of eight wins and two losses. He stands 192 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 83.45 kilograms. Representing Guam versus Academy and Fight Fit Militia and fighting out of South Africa. Put your hands together for John Superman! Brave Nation, this, the main event of Brave Combat Federation 66 is sponsored by Smex Indo. We have got Chad Superman Hanukkah and Black Fight Tights in NJ Mud Tank Law in the black and red loose fit fight shorts. This fight carried potentially for the opportunity to be the number one contender in the middleweight division, something that Chad Hanukkah has experienced before. So the edge in championship bouts goes to Chad Hanukkah. But NJ Lai is an incredible fighter who just systematically breaks down his opponents. Superman, as befitting his name, is edging forward, trying to land a huge right hand. Don't believe that level change. Don't believe that. Don't believe that look, little look of a what was supposed to be an uppercut. It's not going to be the kicks that do it. He's trying to land that big right hand. He's got a little bit of a herky-jerky style. A little bit off where it does Superman, but boom, there it is. Nice kick from Chad Hanukkah. Just slipped that leg right out from NJ La. That's a nice shot to the body, using that reach beautifully. Using the reach while keeping his head safe. Nice head movement from Chad, manages to get away from the hook. At one, though. That's a big kick. You see that landed right on the calf. Interesting, NJ La hasn't initiated a clinch yet. Nice shot over the top. Landed more so on the gloves, Kerrick. And there was that clinch we talked about. Hasn't fully been successful so far. Nice elbow! Brave Nation, names have power. What we saw here was a fighter who intended to win every second of every minute of every round. But we had another fighter who just needed to win one second. That man, of course, is Chad Superman Hanakam, and with an elbow to the head, he dropped his opponent in Sensei. Some of you may have seen the arms sticking up. This is a sign of unconsciousness, but it is not a sign of some, necessarily a sign at all of some deep underlying brain damage. It's a fairly usual response to being knocked unconscious. That stiff arm, the stiff arms upraised. It's a little chilling to see. We now see Superman extending his respect to the corner, to his opponent. And Jay Muttank Law is already coming to, to a certain extent. Typically when fighters come to, they're a little unclear as to where they are. Muttank clearly at this point is not certain where he is or exactly what's going on. He may become a little bit aggressive. He may realize he's in a fight. Again, this is fairly usual after a solid knockout like that. Within about 30 seconds or so, NJ La will have fully come to. He'll comprehend what's going on, and he'll start to follow the direction from the medical staff here, start following the direction from his coaches. And in the meantime, 
to the world goes the man they call with great reason Superman. I do believe we are looking at the number one contender at middleweight in Brave Combat Federation. He looks a little herky. He looks a little jerky. He looks a little awkward, but he hits like Superman. Now, when you consider what strikes the human body is capable of generating, when you talk about a punch, you're talking about an extreme amount of power, but when you're talking about an elbow, it's more. So this, as you're about to see, this is not just any strike from Superman. This is, boom! The most devastating strike you can throw with your arm. Straight elbow to the temple of a fighter moving in at you. Once again, that stiff arm position is a little alarming to see, but it's not unusual and not a sign of any significant damage. Superman, a little overcome with emotion perhaps, showing his love for you brave nation, for his home nation of South Africa, and of course for his opponent. He's in, still, Superman remains in a highly adrenalized state. In La, as predicted, now fully has recovered his senses, likely able to walk under his own control at this point. There'll be a little decision as to whether to bring him to center stage or not. But in any case, the important thing is, NJ Mutt Tank Law is already up and at him. the billionaire strut from Superman. He earned it. Respect paid now by NJ Law to Superman's corner. And from Superman's corner to NJ Law. This sport ultimately is not about winning and losing. It's not about knocking somebody out. It's about fighting yourself. It's about fighting your demons. It's about seeing how far you can push yourself. And in doing so, developing brotherhood, the likes of which is seen in no other sport. Huge thanks to Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa for making all this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Adeki Larkin, calls a halt to the action at 1 minute and 35 seconds of the very first round, declaring the winner via KO, John Superman! Hi!